Let me just double check. The recording? Uh, okay, it's recording. Sige. So good morning, everyone. Welcome to our second plate. This is the um, propo a proposed North Bus Terminal. Uh, so the introduction is bus stations uh, are hardly in most people's minds with glamour and great design. So usually we think of bus stations as uh, mostly uh, utilitar utilitarian spaces, not really something that you would classify as architecture. Uh, in fact, we're more likely to think of uh, airports and even train stations as examples of innovative and stylish architecture. So your job is to create something that's aesthetically pleasing and also functional and then like just like rebrand a bus terminal so the problem is to design a two-story state-of-the-art north bus terminal near sm city mall this is the one um near radisson blue the design solution must require a new approach in planning and designing terminals one that views them as a vital integrated part of the urban realm as well as contributing to the quality of a city or the city our, our cebu city the design solution must incorporate a unique terminal branding as it contributes to the overall image of the building and therefore must uh, therefore the design must embrace a modern approach in order to achieve a unique and memorable public experience so we have uh, several goals here uh, accessibility uh, access to the bus terminal should be convenient, uh, barrier-free, and facilitate streamlined internal circulation. So the ingress and egress points should be located uh, so that it won't conflict with traffic circulation at the peripheral road network. So um, when you see the site, which we'll show a few a few minutes in a few minutes, like make sure again your entrances and exits don't cause any conflicts, uh, traffic congestion, like. Uh, review your site planning. So future expansion, in addition to the operational requirements, the terminal should factor in estimates for future demand. So incorporating feasibility studies as well as statistical analysis will greatly improve your design. So that will be done in your research phase. Multimodal accessibility, integrating provisions for feeder modes, uh, private vehicles, jeepneys, taxis, etc. cetera. So um, we're not saying that you should have uh, parking for private vehicles and jeepneys, etc., but just maybe drop off points and you design or locate the drop off points such that it doesn't conflict with the existing traffic conditions of the site. Of, of course, passenger safety should be a main goal. The commuter should feel safe using public transport at any time of the day and night. So apply creative design solutions to minimize uh, crime and the incidence of crime. For example, the use of better planning, enhanced visibility, barrier-free circulation, wayfinding, lighting, etc. So you need also to integrate universal design. So the architecture must be, or the infrastructure must be barrier-free. So universal design meaning access for PWD, um, people with um, sight impairments, people who can't um, what they call this. Uh, walk properly, so that's what it, that's what it means when it says universal design, not just like for people in wheelchair, wheelchairs, but everyone who has some kind of like impairment that makes it difficult for them to move in the environment. So the passenger should be able to cover their journey in a seamless manner with little effort. And then finally, integrate sustainable development design. So you have your green technologies, you have your um, uh, what they call this, LED lighting, natural lighting, solar solar panels, etc. Furthermore, design solutions for noise control, waste management, rainwater harvesting can be integrated in your design. So if we can uh, find a way to use uh, sustainable development or sustainable design elements, all the better. So this is the site. Uh, over here, uh, we have the Radisson Blue to the west or southwest. You have the uh, highway. Um, connecting to SRP here on the uh, southeast. To the northwest, we have like um, SM. And to the uh, northeast, we have Bayfront Hotel. And I think this is the um, Cebu Daily News building or like, in, I think, yeah, S CBD, yeah. It's a CDB, yes. <laughs> so we have about a total area of 16,000 square meters. 
and then we really double check, triple check your um, lot. So this should be the bearing, um, 123.55 uh, south, 39 degrees, 21 minutes east, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> so this should close. Uh, let us know if there, it doesn't close because we really like check this. And then if you notice on like uh, the actual site, which I, I will show you in a few minutes, there's a parking building here. Um, I think we can just ignore that parking building because we're just using the whole site. Uh, space requirements, so bus parking or waiting area for 20 buses, like that will be like the maximum 20 buses because uh, we try to sketch it out and then if you add more good, but it might become too cramped, you have to consider the turning radius of the bus is larger than normal vehicles. You need to divide the 20 buses into departure base and arrival base. You also need to include taxi and uh, private vehicle arrival drop off areas and within the 20 buses, um, you can allocate a number of those for inter-island buses. So maybe you have a different sort of location for inter-island buses. Remember, um, when you go to a bus terminal, you should already figure out which bus is going where. So how you locate um, intercity buses and inter-island buses will be a very kind of crucial element in your design. So the main passenger areas are the foyer, the, inter the information center, like where you, um, like a concierge in a hotel where you ask, you know, where do things go? How does this place work? The e-ticketing area, uh, preferably closer to the information center. Uh, ancillary, ancillary functions like ATM, um, maybe some shops or like some, uh, what they call this? Uh, money changers maybe. <laughs> if you're if it's like a really big, maybe money changer is not too much because already SM has it. Uh, waiting area and boarding slash departure areas, drinking stations. Uh, toilets uh, for male, female, and PWD, uh, lactating stations for like um, travelers with babies, uh, retail and concession spaces, and again, uh, information uh, system. I think this is like uh, connected to the information center, or maybe like um, just like maps, um, other things you might find in uh, a bus terminal that like tell you where you are and where you want to go. For admin offices, you need a cashier, uh, lockers and toilets. This is these are for the staff. Security office with control room. So mostly for CCTV and other like admin services. Public relations officer office, the PRO office. Um, I would imagine these people handle like complaints or like uh, will assist guests or like travelers. Pantry, canteen, and drinking stations for the staff. Areas for bus conductors and staff. So we have like uh, in the Philippines we have. Um, this culture where the bus conductor um, stays near the bus and like calls people to get into the bus, like to inform people as well as like uh, with, where is this particular bus going? And they have like staff like walking around, maybe cleaning, um, guiding travelers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then maintenance staff. So maintenance room. This includes everything that has to do with cleaning and maintaining the bus terminal lockers and toilets for these staff and also the staff. Um, I think you can combine the pantry and uh, canteen of the maintenance staff and the admin staff uh, if you're really short on space. But um, again, like separate uh, pantries will always be good. Like if you make your uh, workers comfortable, they can do their job better. And finally, the bus, sta bus staff. Uh, again, they will need some kind of pantry, canteen, slash drinking stations, and resting or waiting area. So th these are for the drivers who are not on active duty or are about to go on their shift. So this is something that's really lacking in the current bus terminal. All the uh, drivers are, are like, they have to wait in their bus. There's no like um, rest areas for them. There are like uh, portable toilets. And then it's shared by everyone. So it's really kind of um, not ideal. So your architectural drawing requirements, site analysis. A new one here is the traffic analysis. Uh, I think for my class, we've been um, discussing this a lot because I'm very particular about where are the cars coming in? Where are the cars going? Uh, site development plan, uh, floor plans, uh, all the floor plans, at least four elevations, two sections, two exterior perspectives and two interior perspectives. And then um, we're, we were discussing if um, 
what we call this. You guys could uh, include uh, walkthrough videos. I've heard from the second years that you're the second year teachers, your last year teachers, uh, said you're already very good at um, making videos. So maybe you can include that as well. Walkthrough videos. And then the mechanical plan, electrical plan, plumbing layout, structural design, and analysis. So uh, in my class, we were able to do that, like show the columns and beams, and maybe the analysis part. You can just describe how does the building work? Why did you opt for a this kind of system? Why did you remove a column there, et cetera, et cetera? And then important dates. Um, April 6th, uh, that will be the research deadline. It's actually one week. That's one week from now. Uh, schematics will be due on April 20. That's about like two weeks, maybe like 10 days. Uh, preliminary, another two weeks after April 20. And then final submission will be May 18. Uh, final exam will be May 20, so 3.5 to 4 hours. And the reason why we have it at May 20, so that you'll be all set and um, one week before the end of class. So the end of class for this semester is May 28. Unless there's some like uh, announcements where they extend the end of class, but uh, that will be very unlikely. <laughs> okay, some examples. So when we think of bus terminals, we think of like a uh, proper shelter for the passengers and the vehicles. So at the moment of arrive at the moment of arrival at the bus station, um, your passengers should be shaded from the elements like heat and rain, specifically in the Philippines. And then while waiting for their bus, they could sit around and like uh, maybe grab some food. Currently, it's just the bus and a small waiting area, but that's only for like the my bus users. Uh, for the North Bus Terminal users, it's just an open open lot. So I'll show you a picture of that soon. So this uh, sort of you can really play around with the shading structure, and I think this is the main sort of like um, aesthetic element and also like functional element of your basically your architectural element for your North Bus Terminal. So think about what material this will be, how do you support it, and also since we just went through a debt, it must also be kind of resistant to strong winds or like natural disasters. And then let me move over here to the, uh, let's see, sorry, to like the site. Uh, let me see here. I think I have a decent shot here. Okay. Can everyone see this? Uh, before I go, like any questions, feel free to have questions. And uh, just like raise your hand or whatever. So what we have here, uh, let me open this. I just went to the site yesterday and open in with Photoshop. Sorry, it's loading. Okay. So what we have here, the, this is the lot. Let me change brush size. So I went to like the topmost floor of the parking area in the SM. So this is the lot here. Oops. About that. It's not really because like it's curving because of the panoramic view. Okay. So it includes currently a, what do you call this? A parking structure, which you may or may not include in your design. Uh, let me change my brush very quickly. So there's a parking structure here. Um, it's currently not being used as far as I could tell because there were no cars there. Also notice the damage of this like uh, car parking area. In the original image here, this I think an older image is before Odette. You can clearly see the roof is still there, but now it's just the roof frames. <laughs> Only the roof frames remain. And then over here, this is the my bus terminal. And then over here, this is the North bus terminal proper. So it's just this lot here. You see there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and uh, maybe 14, 15, 16, 16 buses. And you see that it's just an open lot. They're free to move around in this area. There's really no uh, kind of planning or whatever. It's just that um, they've just agreed that the parking of the buses will be here and parking of the buses will be here. And in the center, it's free. It's basically a free for all in the center. Buses come through here. That's their entrance and they exit through there. 
And you also see some private vehicle parking around here. I think this is for the bus staff. The public toilets are here. This is, you see the portable toilets are here. And then you have Bayfront Hotel, and this is like an office building here. I think part of the Cebu Daily News is also there. And you see a lot of unused space. This is unused space. This is unused space. Also unused space over here. The My Bus, um, I'll just color it in blue. The My Bus service comes in here. And then it like parks itself here and then goes around like this. And it exits over there. So you have the My Bus, which is a SM um, provided service, like to get to the different SM uh, markets, like connecting to Seaside. Uh, there's also a drop off, I think, near Chonghua Hospital, Fuente Osmania. And then, yeah, so if you look at it, there's a lot of unused space in the current setup. So your goal uh, is to really maximize the space over here. Oops. Yeah. Maximize this whole red, uh, red area. Um, you can include or disregard this um, parking building over here. And then we can like take a look at some video so you guys have a better context of the site. Um, also, uh, if any of you know how to transfer video from your like phone to like YouTube or something, for some reason I can't do it on my phone and the quality is really bad. So this is um, from SM, basically the... Um, uh, the northwestern part. So I'm looking at the terminal from this part over here. And this is what you see. So this was taken between 3 to 4 p.m. So not really peak hours, very uh, quiet. But you still see some vehicles passing by. So this uh, road here, um, let me just pause it. This road here, the 12 meter access road to the northwest. This is for SM, um, uh, SM people coming to SM. So coming and going from SM. So they enter, they enter over this side. Let me go back to the video. This side, the right side of the screen and they exit over here on the left side of the screen. And they have some planter boxes here. I think you can also, if you want, you could probably do something about these planter boxes. Uh, maybe design some new ones. I think these are like very old looking and really, it, I think it will really contribute to uh, your design if you also consider the surrounding streets and don't just think of them as like outside of your jurisdiction or something like that. Like think about the whole site and how it fits within the local context. Also think about like how your site will look from by hotel. Uh, no, not by hotel, Bayfront Hotel. <laughs> also, you got some pedestrian traffic here, just a little bit. Um, I think I'm standing on the, uh, the pedestrian line is here. So uh, in the Philippines, the pedestrian lanes and sidewalks are more of suggestions, so people don't really use it. So think about how you can make people or encourage people to use the sidewalks. You can do this by adding shading, uh, elevating the sidewalk so it's like free from... Um, like uh, puddles of water, etc. So this is the northwest corner of the site. We're looking at the parking building on the right and the my bus terminal here on the left. And you can see the my bus buses uh, parking and like picking up passengers. Okay, let's see here. So this video is about two minutes long. I wanted to count the number of pedestrians and vehicles passing through. So as you can tell, not that many. Um, because it's like 3 to 4 p.m. That was the only time I could like, visit the site. Let's look at the site from another angle over here. So this one is, let me full screen this. So this one is on the north, uh, no, southwest corner. So I'm behind the, the parking building, looking onto the, um, what we call this, hang on. Looking onto the 30 meter like road. Uh, 30 meters national road connecting to SRP. So I'm here uh, behind Radisson Hotel, but since I can't stand behind Radisson Hotel, I'm like standing behind the parking uh, structure over here, looking at, into the site, uh, looking uh, east. 
So I'm standing on the western side of the site, looking east. And then I think we can see how the buses come in. There's a bus coming in right now. So the bus is here. You can see my mouse, it's slowing down. It makes a right turn into the site. And notice there are no shading structures or devices, shading devices, etc. There's only one, two, three, four portable toilets for the staff. And as you know, these aren't the best, like when it comes to hygiene. And then you have some like chairs here for staff, but really no one is sitting outside in this heat. Uh, yesterday was like very hot. And then, yeah, you see the bus going in and there it goes. Okay, uh, another like uh, thing to watch out in this video is that you see um, traffic should be going uh, pretty much, um, what's the word, uninterrupted in the 30 meter road. So imagine if this was peak hour and you have a bus coming in here, you, it's really important that the bus, if you use this as an entrance, should not be impeding traffic on this side. I think it would be better actually to have the bus entrance on the quieter side here near uh, Bayfront Hotel. I think they just did this so that um, there's like one flow of traffic, like enter here and then exit into um, SM. I like the SM, uh, Bayfront Hotel. The idea I think here is that um, it would be easier for a bus to exit onto less traffic rather than exit onto like uh, more traffic. Because this is really the more busy of the, this street is the most busy of all the four streets. Uh, I think we only have three streets actually. So we have Bradison Hotel to the west, uh, southwest, 12 meter access road, which is really for SM. And then the Bayfront Hotel is a public road uh, currently being used as the exit for the buses and the 30 meter road as the entrance for the buses. Um, another note is the my bus uses the 20 meter road as the entrance and exit. And uh, you'll have to make your own decisions whether that is the best location for uh, those buses. Okay, this one is another view. This time I'm in a Bayfront Hotel, uh, the lobby. Uh, and I'm looking at the my bus over here. So this is the my bus going in to the my bus terminal. Notice also the size of the my buses. They're larger than the north bus terminal buses. And I think um, your parking parking spaces should be what they call this of a size that uh, my bus terminals can also use, or maybe you can have a you can keep it separate, but something more integrated would be better. Like uh, it'll be difficult to have different sheds, plus it won't look nice. Or maybe you can create some kind of way. Uh, it really depends on your creativity and like uh, design. If you have multiple sort of sheds for different locations, how will you connect those sheds? Um, basically, it's an open-ended question. There are no right or wrong answers in design. So it's really up to you. Um, your goal is just to make it functional and look good, as well as focus on the design goals about accessibility, sustainable design, uh, barrier-free access, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, I think nothing else happens in this video. I just like made it two minutes, so it's more or less similar to like um, what you call this, uh, all the other videos. So we have two-minute videos on each of the sides, so that will like what they call this, constitute a more or less objective survey of the site. <laughs> also notice the number of vehicles, not much pedestrian traffic, especially because this is like between 3 to 4 p.m. So it's very hot as well. Not much people will be walking around this area. So the peak hours would most likely be the morning, like uh, the early morning and the evening uh, after work. So people coming in to work and people going home in the evening. And this is like me standing, um, what do you call this? Near the Cebu Daily News building, if I remember correctly, this office building at the corner, looking at the 30 meter road to the southeast of the site. You see Radisson blue here on the upper right. And I think I stick around until I try to find if a bus arrives. So every two minutes, um, based on my uh, like site visit, Usually there's a bus coming in and this is like not peak hour. So if it will be peak hour, so it will be more. Uh, you can say like maybe every two minutes there's like 
two or three buses coming in. And you can already imagine like vehicles of that size turning right. If you don't make the right turn seamless or like um, if you don't give them enough space to make a right turn in, a, in an efficient way, you can really um, imagine how much traffic that will cause, especially in this uh, very busy uh, national road. So this is 3 to 4 p.m. again, not much traffic, uh, not much congestion. Very easy for people to turn right into SM, uh, right on my screen, uh, a left turn for them. You have some pedestrians. There's like one guy here. I saw only one guy walking this part of the road, uh, mostly because there's no shading. It's very hot. And also it's it's three. It's I think at this time it will be around like um, 340. Uh, I took a break at the Bayfront Hotel because <laughs> it was so hot. <laughs> uh, you see a lot of people turning right into SM. You see a lot of people, um, maybe around like 10 cars in like two minutes going from SM to the 30 meter road. I did actually count like you can, that's why I video it. So like you can count it yourself, how many cars. And this is the bus. It was signaling right. So I was thinking it would go inside the terminal. It makes a right here, but then it proceeds going forward into the national road. So I thought that would be uh, going inside. For some reason, this, this uh, what do you call this, van is just parking here. I think it's it wants to go in, but it's not going in. It's just like staying here. I really don't know, really don't know why. It's just like stopped here for some reason. Ah, yeah. Uh, it just cut like uh, the reason why it stopped there because there's another car blocking its way so this is something you really want to avoid there's a car it looks like a taxi going into the north bus terminal and it's blocking the way of this uh what they call this van um because like it's only one way into north bus terminal so imagine if these were two buses instead of two regular sized vehicles that would cost already a very big um traffic jam during peak hours so maybe this uh, setup is really not the most efficient or more likely it really isn't efficient so i think that's all of my videos that's four videos yep and then we can take uh different views of the site over here let me open it up for you uh let's see here i'll go at the beginning so this is up here So this is, can I make it bigger? Okay. It's about speaking it. So this is the north and the southwest of the site, looking into uh, the east eastern side of the site. Uh, you can see the bus terminal. You can see the portable toilets on the right. You can see the different buildings there. You have Bayfront Hotel, and I think it's another hotel here. Notice their difference in height. Um, doesn't really make it look like... Um, doesn't really give good a good view from this side. Like it's good if you're standing inside the hotel looking into the bus terminal, but the two buildings themselves have such a unique architectural style that they don't really complement each other. Um, this is like a very big, not really a very big, but a common problem in uh, developing countries where they have similar, like we have buildings near each other, but with totally different heights and architectural styles. Doesn't make for a very interesting uh, it makes the city look ugly, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And then I think I have some images here of the, where did I, yeah, the My Bus Terminal over here. So you can see they attempted to design something. Um, we can completely ignore this, by the way. Um, the problem with this design, I think I'll show a picture here, yeah, is that it doesn't really protect the users from the sun. So notice this is like 3 p.m. The shaded area is only on the right side of the image, the basically the eastern side of this like uh, structure. And by the time it was 4 p.m., the sun was already inside half of the shaded structure. So, um, so if you imagine the open, uh, the sunlight is already here, you can't sit here, it's very hot. It goes even further deeper into the structure. So you really need roof eaves to make like a comfortable structure. This design, while visually appealing, it doesn't really function well as like to protect the people from the sun. So um, this is something you should avoid. 
a uh, picture of a cat in Bayfront Hotel. <laughs> let's see. This is me at the Bayfront lobby, just like taking uh, images. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> I'm looking at the how the glass wall is like uh, structured. Um, let's see here. Oops. Oh, is that all of it? Okay, let's go a bit back over here. So this is an image of the parking structure. Uh, notice it's just a, really just a parking structure. You can see it's all steel. It may inspire you for your terminal design. I think it was just interesting to see that uh, an all steel structure. And uh, yeah, you may include it in your design or you may just ignore it. Uh, I think that's all of my images here. Tickets, cats. Yeah, I think that's all of my images. I was like looking at the damage on Radisson Blue. Uh, you can see the sort of the facade like peeling away because of that. Um, view from SM looking into the looking into Bayfront Hotel. Uh, view at Radisson Blue. So this area here um, directly sort of uh, let me open PowerPoint. Directly across from the site, you have uh, uh, bicycle parking. Basically, they have these uh, bicycle stands, if I zoom in a bit more. So you put your bicycle here, and then you get your um, bicycle chain, and then just chain it onto the stand. So that's a decent sort of way to provide bicycle parking. So maybe some of your travelers or users ride the bus with the bike or they bike from like somewhere near this side, they park it here and they go wherever, like uh, to the north uh, of Cebu or something like that. Or maybe this could be just cycling for people in SM. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> but it's there if you want to use it. Let's see here. So this is a panoramic view. You can see the uh, open image new tab. You can see the bicycle stations here. You can see the parking structure here and then uh, supposedly, I think these are shaded walk areas, but they've been damaged because of that. And now they're just like open, uh, <laughs> open walk areas. Uh, I guess you can count the uh, roofing as a um, trellis. Okay, let's see. Okay, let me see that. I think that's all of it. Yeah. So if there are any questions, uh, feel free to ask. It's still 8.30. Um, <laughs> Bayfront Hotel Lobby. Food, like uh, do, do, do. QR code if you want to see the menu of the uh, restaurant at the lobby. And I think this is just it. Yeah. Let's see. Any other images I have for you guys? Ah, here we go. Maybe this one will be more useful. So, aerial view of the site. Uh, another aerial is like uh, just taking pictures. This is the <laughs> fourth floor of SM, uh, SM parking lot. It's literally just that. You want to avoid this. <laughs> so just imagine um, a roof structure here would have been really good, but I don't think they accounted for it. Just open uh, roof deck. And then over here, you can see a bit more detail of the MyBus terminal. It's just basically a series of triangles, which uh, visually interesting, uh, but unfortunately doesn't really provide a lot of shade, especially during like 3 to 4 p.m. So I'm imagining at 9 a.m., like uh, 9 to 10 a.m., the sun would be on the other side and then it will still go into the shaded structure. So you really need roof eaves. Um, I think in trap desks you would cover this. Uh, from what I remember, uh, adequate roof eaves would be 1.2 to 1.5 meters. You can make it longer, but the problem is you'll have like a cantilever roof eave and it will be like difficult to support. Uh, what else do I have here? Just making sure I don't miss anything. Uh, parking lot at SM. This is just me measuring the parking uh, spaces in inside the parking building. So that's pretty much it. Any questions so far? I'll, I'll send you the um, links to the to the PowerPoint. I'll just or the problem. Just I'll just send you the problem. Okay. Let me send you the link. Hang on. Uh, bus terminal PDF. Copy, share, change, copy link, editor, copy link here. Also put it onto the Facebook page. So any questions so far, guys? Let's see, download. 
Jesus. Attach mm -hmm. file, choose file, bus terminal. No problem. Hello. So if you don't have any questions, I think we can break out to our um, design classes. Uh, self-recording.